everybody, Catherine Graham here from Journey Healers. And today I'm excited to bring to you the After Tarot. Um, so the After Tarot is a 78 card deck made by uh, Lo Scarabio. And the artwork is by Julia F. Misaglia. And I've seen this deck online and I've really had quite the giggle over some of the cards that are depicted. So I'm just going to open it up here and then I'll show you each of the cards and kind of what... I feel that they mean. Um, so like most tarot decks, it does come with your little book that shows, tells you what the cards are to represent. Um, however, I tend to just kind of set these books to the side and go more so with my intuition and what uh, my intuition is telling me about the cards. So as you can see, uh, backs of the cards are nice enough. Nothing overly special, uh, but they are nice enough. <laughs> All right, so going through each of the decks, or each of the cards now. So we start off with the Fool. Now typically the Fool is the man walking towards the cliff with the dog chasing after him, warning him of uh, the things that are to come. However, this time we've got the Fool hanging off the cliff, smelling a flower or rose, I guess, and he's still completely oblivious to everything that's happening around him. The magician shows the magician using all of his magical um, powers and properties as he lifts everything up off the table. He also has a visit from a little bird there. The Hierophant looks quite the same as what she does in a typical tarot deck, except for there is that crescent moon there at the bottom of her dress. And her dress actually kind of reminds me more so of water in this picture. The Empress um, with her swans at the bottom there and all of the new uh, life that's taken place. Um, Empress is typically one of the most used uh, pregnancy cards, so it's kind of interesting now that in the after tarot that the birds um, have given birth to their new babies. The Emperor, again, just like the Empress, looking much the same, except for now he's got a ram there at the bottom, um, perhaps as a new pet, perhaps as a new companion. Uh, the Emperor tends to be quite bold-headed, so I think the use of the goat or the ram is really good for what the Emperor is really all about. The Hierophant. Um, now has the book open and is teaching others from the looks of it of what it is that he has to share. The lover's card, a lot like the uh, lovers in the Rider Waite, except for now, uh, what I believe is Archangel Michael is depicted holding on to that sword and they're sharing that apple from, if you go into the biblical times uh, from Adam and Eve and the story of the apple and taking that first bite into that temptation. <laughs> this is one I get a giggle out of, um, the chariot. And he's not so much interested anymore in the direction that he's going, but rather in looking at his iPhone or his cell phone device, whatever that might be, um, as he goes forward. Um, and how often do we all get so lost in what it is that we're doing that we're not even paying attention to the direction that we're going in? Uh, strength card looks very much the same as the rider weight, except for now the woman and the lion are embracing. Great um, analogy of the duality between the two card or between the two characters on the card and the love that can be shared even though we don't always necessarily see it. And the hermit this time, um, instead of a cane, he's holding on to that snake and also the black wolf that's there with him. The wheel of fortune, again, very much the same. And bringing forward the justice, 
finding a lot of the major arcana cards are a lot the same with very uh, subtle differences uh, between what's in the typical Rider Waite art and what's being shown here. So with the typical Rider Waite, uh, Justice isn't holding on to the sword. So now he's holding on to the sword. And if you see the bottom there, you've got a king that's bagging and you also have a beggar that's bagging. So kind of interesting in that concept. The hanged man, we have the appearance of a woman who's letting the hanged man have a drink. And death card looking very much the same as per normal, except for now there's that woman who's crying at the bottom. Um, that's a really only big difference that I'm seeing. I'm not sure if this is a printing error. Um, there is that circle of water kind of going through the bottom of the temperance body there. Um, so I'm not sure if that's just a printing error, if that's just the way all of the cards are. Um, the difference between this and the typical rider weight is the bird flying out of the cup there um, as the water is going down into the water formation. Um, <clears throat> And the devil card. Now the two lovers are actually fornicating rather than uh, being separated from each other. And the tower card. Now you're seeing the complete destruction after the tower has fallen. And the star card showing the woman um, completely engaging in the water and everything that's around her. The moon card, pretty interesting. The typical moon card doesn't have a character built into it. So having this moon card with the person uh, walking forward is in neat. I, I like the solitari solidarity um, that's with that and the glimpse that we all have to be able to go within. With the sun card, the baby's off the horse, and now it looks like a bunch of toddlers just kind of running around and playing, having their fun together. Judgment. Um, and this one I, I, I really actually like. Um, be, as it shows the death of what once was as we go through that transformational period with the judgment. And the world looking very much the same, except for we've got the four um, different suits of the tarot that are in the clouds. So now we're going into the minor arcana, um, starting with the cups. So we've got the ace of cups here. And instead of holding on to the cup, now you're just holding on to that pure love and the freedom that the bird represents. The two of cups has your lovers embracing. The Three of Cups is very much the same and just women celebrating and that feminine energy. I really like this one, the Four of Cups. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I find it so funny is that typically the uh, in the Rider Waite, the Four of Cups is represented with a cloud handing this man here in the picture a cup and he's typically kind of refusing that cup and not wanting to take it. Now we see that he's taken the cup but he's dumping out all of the contents. So that one really makes me laugh because sometimes we are being given exactly what it is we want. And yet when we receive it, we still act as though we don't want it and we let it go. Five of cups shows the coldness and the sadness that comes when we focus only on what we've lost and not everything that's in the background. As you can see in the background, I guess hold this proper uh, right over there. You still have some things that he could be focusing on, and yet he's still wanting to focus over here on what's been lost. Six of Cups has the children, rather than playing with the cups, running home to mom, to that safety and that shelter. And the Seven of Cups being wrapped up in that temptation again and ignoring all of that stuff that's behind you. This one with the Eight of Cups looks at everything that's been left behind. As the So this man over here, he's typically depicted in the Eight of Cups. And here we've got the woman that's coming in to look at what it is that this man has left behind. Nine of Cups 
showing that the man has been given the feast um, and everything that he's wanted has come to him. Ten of Cups, again, that joy and that love and that celebration that comes forward with the Ten of Cups uh, being depicted here. Um, a lot of the energies that I get from the Ten of Pentacles are coming forward in this one as well, especially with the old man down here in the corner. <laughs> the Page of Cups, his fish jumped right out of the cup this time. The Queen of Cups, drinking her own, or sorry, the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups here is drinking his own, uh, drinking the fluid that he's collected in his cup. And this to me is a great depiction of only we can make ourselves happy. Uh, we can't always rely on others to bring that happiness to us. The Queen of Cups. And the King of Cups. Just allowing himself to just let that water flow, let that emotional energy and that loving energy to flow. Here we go into the pentacles. So this here is the ace of pentacles. And the hand is no longer holding on to the pentacle, but rather holding on to the scorpion. The two of pentacles, the boat has made it to the shore. And he's still juggling with the people walking towards him. Three of Pentacles with the stone carving in the war, uh, in the wall now. Uh, the Four of Pentacles with the image of death coming up to him as he holds on to those coins for dear life. And the Five of Pentacles. And you see the two people in the background here that are depicted in the Rider weight system holding on to each other while they're watching someone with many things uh, walk right past them and not be able to receive what it is that that woman is carrying with her. <clears throat> and the Six of Pentacles, giving to those in need. Seven of Pentacles, reaping the harvest. Eight of Pentacles, and it looks like he finally got his hard work done and the reward of doing that achievement. Nine of Pentacles and the fruit that the bearing or the fruit they received from all of their hard work. Ten of Pentacles. And this time we've just got the child there, the man and the other adults are walking away and we've just got the dog and the child holding on to... Um, that celebration and that joy that they've been able to pass on. And the Page of Pentacles, and he's handing it off to a little dwarf guy there. The Knight of Pentacles. I can honestly say I'm not feeling much with the, uh, the queens and the kings and whatnot in this deck. The King of Pentacles. Now we go on to the Wands. So here we've got the Ace of Wands. That Salamander. So again, that hand has dropped the suit. And now it's an animal that's taken the place. The Two of Wands. They're embracing the journey together rather than the man holding it on his own. The Three of Wands with the eagle taking the journey. Four of Wands, the wedding celebrations after the marriage. The Five of Wands, everyone gave up on that fight. The Six of Wands, a mistress or a lover has come to distract the uh, suitor in going forward. Seven of Wands, Looks like they're really getting into the battle now. The Eight of Wands, where he's taking that action. Nine of Wands, he no longer needs to hold on to everything on his own. Ten of Wands, he just couldn't carry any more of those wands by himself. 
the Page of Wands. This guy looks kind of depressing as he walks away from everything behind him. Um, perhaps he's worn out from the work of doing the uh, fields. The Knight of Wands. We've got the Sphinx showing up there at the bottom. Queen of Wands. She's holding on to the Sunflower here, which she doesn't do in the Rider Waite deck. And the King of Wands. And now moving into the Swords. <clears throat> so we've got the Ace of Swords. <clears throat> and the Two of Swords. So typically we don't have those two men on either side. Um, and the woman is just sitting there blindfolded holding on to the Swords. And this goes to show the battle that's happening outside of her mind. The Three of Swords. Those Swords are finally out and the heart can begin to heal. Four of Swords. And it looks as though healing has begun. And the Five of Swords. And he's the champion as everyone else drops their battles. The Six of Swords. The Seven of Swords, and it looks like he's about to get hooked up even though he thinks he's in the clear. And the Eight of Swords, and here you have a man coming in to <clears throat> help this woman and take those bindings off of her. And the Nine of Swords, battling those demons. Ten of Swords. And that one kind of hits the heart right where it is, as you see that man who had all of those swords in his back being rescued by others, but still carrying one of those swords with him. And the Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords, who I always think is kind of a kick-ass guy, um, and it really looks like he's gone to charge here. And the Queen of Swords. And look at that delicacy of her holding on to that butterfly right at the tip of her sword. And then we've got the King of Swords. So as you can see, it's a very different deck from most of the tarot decks, and I'm really excited to start working with it. Um, the card stock is a decent card stock. Uh, the energy of the cards feels very light and fluffy, and as I called them earlier on my Facebook car, uh, page, I think that they seem to be a little bit cheeky, that they would be the kind of cards that just kind of make you laugh about the situations that we sometimes tend to get caught up in uh, in our everyday lives. Um, so I will work on doing a spread with these, and I'll upload it in a separate video so you can watch it if you choose to. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great day.